I'm about to go on a unique journey around some of the most remote areas New Zealand has to offer. This is ridiculously amazing. With Stan Scott as my guide, we'll be meeting Kiwis who embody the traits of a nation. Very nice to meet you. Kia ora, mate. Humble. Bit of a privilege. Resourceful. Talking five years realistically. And always up for a laugh. <laughs> I don't believe that for a second. <laughs> I can't wait to get started and discover what makes New Zealand. Honestly, Stan, that is truly amazing. Can we do the same tomorrow? Mate, welcome to Queenstown. Thanks, man. You looking forward to your trip? Do you know what? I am super excited. It's a gorgeous location, lovely landscape, beautiful day. Couldn't be better. But why are we in this part of New Zealand? Well, this part of New Zealand is so special to us. You only have to drive five minutes down the road and you're really remote. So people around here have to know their DIY skills and are super hands-on. You know, for me, coming all the way from the UK, you realise just how remote New Zealand as a country is. So you've yeah. got to be hands-on, you've got to be self-sufficient, you've got to be practical. Oh, yeah, you? you're bang on, mate. You know, from the first settlers that came out here, they had that number eight Y mentality right through to today. So being down here is the perfect place to show you what makes us Kiwis. Excellent. I am super excited. I've never been around this part of New Zealand before. Well, it's funny you should say that because there's a lot of Kiwis that actually haven't been down to this part of the world either. Fantastic. Should we do it? Let's crack on. Let's do it. Over the next four days, I'll be taking on an amazing journey around the Lower South Island to get a glimpse into what makes Kiwis tick. Day one sees us travelling from Queenstown through to Tiano and across to the Murchison Mountains Takahe Valley. Next is Waimumu and its rugby mad farmer, and then even further south to meet a man with an impressive Mai Mai. In Kaka Point, I'll be put to work restoring Hone Two Footer's crib before moving north to Lawrence, ending the trip in Mount Paisa, where DIY is a way of life. At all these locations, Stan tells me we'll find the stories, the buildings, and the landscape that makes New Zealand and its people so unique. We're heading to Tiano, where helicopter pilot and Fjordland enthusiast Kim Hollows lives. A cinema didn't exist down here, so what does he do? In true Kiwi style, he actually builds one. He built himself a cinema? Yeah. Along with some mates, Kim filmed a movie from out the side of his aircraft, and then built a cinema to make sure people got to see it. It seems that around here, if it needs doing, you do it yourself. So this is it, mate. Fjordan Cinema, mate. This is where it all happens, eh? Awesome. The local cinema is now a focal point for the community, complete with watering hole. It's a great example of how just one building can bring a town together. But it wasn't an altogether easy road getting the job done. So start to finish from filming to completion of the building, how long are we talking about? You're talking five years, realistically. <laughs> so yeah, it was a big mission. To make the film itself is brilliant, but to then build a cinema to show the film is unbelievable. As we were making the film, we were building the, building the cinema at the same time, so it was just like the day the cinema was finished, how does the projector work, how do you thread it? It was a labour of love, but uh, I just wanted to showcase this, I wanted people to see it, so yeah, it's been great. And how many people do you think have seen the movie? It's been going for a decade now and about 30,000 a year come through, so... Yeah, a been, year? Yeah, no, so it's been phenomenal. That's fantastic. Because mm. obviously it's very specialised, building a, a picture theatre, you've got to get the sound and the acoustics right, and everything Absolutely. came out pretty good? It did. Well, look, you know, my brief is for it. I want to go to the movies, I want to sit in this chair, not touch anyone, or, or someone put their feet on my shoulders, so <laughs> everything is handmade, right down to the seats, 52 seats, so everything right to the sound system has, has been handmade. Must have cost a, a small fortune. Well, it's one of those things. It's, you know, it's life's all about money, isn't it? It's like you've got to do these things in your lifetime, and you, you know, I entered into something I had no idea how big a project was going to be, but we got there in the end, and you know, I've been very pleased with the action. It's been, it's been a humbling experience. It must have been quite a proud moment when the theatre was all finished and built, and then the film screened for the first time. Yeah, it's been great. So, what do you reckon the chances are that you'll be able to take us up in your chopper and show us a bit of that area? Well, I think we, you guys have a look at the film, and we'll go from there. How does that sound? Perfect. Amazing. You can see George Wyatt make a film about it, uh, showcase it to the world. Definitely, I feel honoured to see it. 
Flying into the Murchison Mountains is extraordinary, and I'm starting to see how having this in your backyard must shape the way Kiwis see the world. We're visiting an iconic New Zealand landmark, the Dock Hut, and this one has been crucial to the survival of the Takahe. The birds were thought extinct for over 50 years before being rediscovered right here and it's the Department of Conservation Rangers that make sure they don't disappear again. Yeah, you know, Jason, how are you, yes, mate? All right. Good, thanks, mate. Hi, Jason, George, George, nice to see you. How are you? You're good, right? thank you, yes. What a stunningly beautiful place. I can't believe that this is your place of work. You are super lucky, man. Yeah, I'd imagine not too many Kiwis have actually been here. No, that's right. Access is quite restricted, so it's a bit of a privilege. So how yeah. many tuck have we got alive now? So last count was 306 Takahe alive. We're able to produce nearly 10% of the population every year now. So this year we've just put 26 juveniles back into the Murchies. So it's going great. That's yeah. such a turnaround, isn't it? Yes, no, it really is. So we've got a dock hut just up the track here. Now George and I are going to be staying there tonight. Can you give me a little bit of insight as to actually how the hut was constructed? So they brought the materials in by a float plane and landed on the lake, brought in all the materials and men that they needed to build the hut. So that's awesome. back in the 1950s, yeah? That was 1954 they did that, yeah. It was a kid seat style and they brought it in and assembled it here? That's right, yeah. Right. It was a very simple hut, just easy to ship in and easy to build. Oh, well, thanks very much. No Looking worries. forward to it tonight. Thanks so much. Yep. Have a good night. Take care, man. You too. So just me and you, Stan. Cuddly. Stan, this is awesome, isn't it? Really super simple little hut. That's so cool. So why were these built? Well, the main purpose of these originally was for the Department of Conservation workers working out in the field, but anyone can come down, use these huts. There's hundreds of them scattered all over New Zealand. I love the simplicity of them. Yeah. You know, you've got a real simple fire, you have a small cooking area, and you have a long drop outside. Um, this one is actually quite spacious. You actually do get a lot smaller than this even. Smaller than this? Yeah. This is tiny, man. <laughs> no, no, this is actually quite luxurious. Is it? Yeah. A lot of the huts were built back in the 1950s, and during that time we used native timber, you know, kauri, rimu, matai. So this particular hut no doubt would have been made out of local rimu or beech. Essentially it was used the materials from the surrounding area. And how much do they vary in style? I mean, this one's got corrugated metal on the outside. Some of them have got wood on the outside, plywood, but a lot of them do have corrugated iron. It's a good, functional, simple product to use, and it's relatively lightweight and easy to cut. I love it. Absolutely love it. Place to sleep, bit of shelter, bit of food, and the most beautiful outdoors. Yeah, you know, it's about the location. It's about getting amongst nature, being outdoors, and loving New Zealand. So, um, who's sleeping where? Well, this one here looks quite nice and spacious. See, the thing is, I'm, in, I'm, I'm a little bit taller than you, so I'm thinking <laughs> this is perfect for me, and that tiny little bit up there might be just <laughs> ideal for you, mate. Night, Stan. Night, George. Who won the match? It was a draw. It was a setup, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Either he's got a hell of a lot of time on his hands, or he's just got an Einstein brain. Oh! Oh, oh he's good!